Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In continuation with the series on cellular adaptations, we have learned about atrophy and hypertrophy, right? In today's session, let's learn about hyperplasia. Now, hyperplasia by definition is increase in the number of cells in a given organ. In my earlier session, I had talked about hypertrophy, right, which is increase in the size of the cell in the given organ. Whereas here, it is increasing the number of cells in the given organ. And remember, hyperplasia can occur only if the cell population is capable of dividing. Okay, non-dividing cells cannot obviously show hyperplasia. For example, neurons, the cardiac muscle cells, the skeletal muscle cells, all these are the ones which do not divide and that is why they only show hypertrophy and not hyperplasia. Now, hyperplasia again, it can be broadly categorized into physiologic hyperplasia and pathologic hyperplasia. The common example for physiologic hyperplasia is like we saw in my earlier session, enlarged size of the uterus in pregnancy. That's because of myometrial smooth muscle hyperplasia along with smooth muscle hypertrophy. The enlargement of the breast in case of, you know, in puberty, in pregnancy and during lactation is because of physiologic hyperplasia of the breast parenchyma. Physiologic hyperplasia can also be a compensatory hyperplasia. For example, you know, if you knock off up to three-fourths of the liver, the remaining one-fourth, you know, proliferates in order to maintain the function of the liver and that is known as compensatory hyperplasia which occurs in case of severe liver, liver damage. Compensatory hyperplasia can also be seen in kidneys and even skin. Marrow hyperplasia is an example of physiologic hyperplasia. Whereas pathologic hyperplasia, whenever there is excess stimulation for the organs, for the cells to proliferate, then you have pathologic hyperplasia. For example, if there is increase in estrogen, what happens? That can stimulate the endometrium proliferate. So, there is endometrial hyperplasia in the case of hormone excess, particularly estrogen. Prostatic hyperplasia is also because of hormonal excess. Sometimes, even some viral infections, like for example, human papilloma virus, can result in hyperplasia of the epidermis, resulting in the formation of viral warts. What is the mechanism of hyperplasia? See, there are two important mechanisms which you need to understand. One, the hyperplasia can be growth factor driven proliferation of mature cells. It's because of proliferation of mature cells due to the growth factors or it can be because of increased output of new cells from the tissue stem cells. Now, let us understand this concept taking one example of liver, hyperplasia of liver. If there is very mild injury of the liver, what really happens is there is increase in the production of growth factors. How by the hepatocytes are the stellate cells. Okay, So, the growth factors secreted are synthesized by the hepatocytes or the stellate cells. They result in hyperplasia of the liver. Now, if the injury is very severe, for example, partial hepatectomy, what happens? There is activation of the hepatocyte progenitor cells. Where are they located? They are located in the canal of Heading. And these progenitor cells, they give rise to new hepatocytes. Now, I hope you understood the concept one, which means there is increased output of new cells from the tissue stem cells. So, this is basically new hepatocytes are being produced, whereas here there is proliferation of the existing hepatocytes. Okay, So, hyperplasia can have either of these two mechanisms. Let us take a few examples. Let us learn a few examples. One is benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is a form of hyperplasia that affects the prostate gland where it involves increase in the number of cells in the prostate leading to its enlargement. And why it is important? Because of the prostate being enlarged, that can cause urinary symptoms such as difficulty in starting urination. It could be a very weak urine stream or 
where there is increased frequency of urination, especially at the night. So this is the example of, I mean, the illustration of benign prostatic hyperplasia. That's a normal prostate. This is hyperplastic prostate, which is also called as benign prostatic hyperplasia. What do you see here? You find proliferation of the glands, prostatic glands and the stroma, both. So there is glandular hyperplasia and the stroma hyperplasia. And these proliferating glands show hyperplasia of the epithelial lining. Okay. And what you see, the secretions inside is a corpora malacia. Let's take another example, endometrial hyperplasia. Why does this occur? As I told you earlier, it's because there is proliferation of endometrium due to excess of estrogen. Okay. Generally, there is a progesterone which counter balances the estrogen. If you, if you have more and more estrogen without adequate progesterone, then you have excess estrogen and that results in proliferation of endometrium. Now, why it is important? Because endometrial hyperplasia can present with symptoms like abnormal uterine bleeding and if it is left unchecked, it can also result in the risk of developing endometrial carcinomas. So that's the illustration or the uh, diagram of endometrial hyperplasia where you look at this. This is the section, cut section of the uterus where you can find there is hyperplasia of the endometrial lining. So what do you see? You find variably sized glands which is showing large variation in size and shape and these are lined by hyperplastic columnar epithelium. The stroma is compact. This is a simple hyperplasia. We will talk about you know, the types of endometrial hyperplasia when we discuss endometrium uh, pathology. The last example which we need to uh, understand is epidermal hyperplasia. Now, what does that mean? It refers to thickening of the epidermis. What is epidermis? We know that it is the outer layer of the skin, right? And that is due to an increase in the number of keratinocytes, squamous epithelial cells. Epidermal hyperplasia can occur in response to chronic irritation or inflammation or some viral infections. For example, chronic dermatitis or even psoriasis or even viral warts, which, which I told you earlier, it's because of infection of the skin due to human papilloma virus. So that's your normal skin with normal epidermis and the dermis. Can you make out the markedly hyperplastic epithelium, hyperplastic epidermis? So that completes a small topic on hyperplasia. With this, we have completed atrophy, hypertrophy and hyperplasia. In my next session, let's learn another important concept in cellular adaptation that is metaplasia. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have anything to ask. Don't forget to subscribe and please do share this video with your friends. Bye-bye.